Hi, and welcome to the Holly C Podcast, a show about expressing your brilliance with ease and flow. I'll show you how to take the woo-woo out of the clouds and apply it to real life for effortless action. This show is for world changers and future world changers. So if you know there's more to life and you're wondering what's next, this is your show. Hi, I'm Holly, your host. I'm a speaker, author, teacher of health, vitality, and spirituality, and also a dragon spirit guide. Today's episode, we're going to talk about lessons learned from the hummingbirds. Now, oftentimes when we talk about nature, we talk about the wisdom of the owl, the cleverness of the fox, the ability to soar like an eagle. So we often attribute a lot of wisdom to nature and animals, and I do that myself. There's so much to learn from our natural environment. I mean, there's so much you can learn just from watching a snail. And the hummingbirds, I have also learned from them as well. But it's interesting how I've learned from them. So it definitely doesn't fall into the wisdom of the owl category. In fact, I've heard hummingbirds be described as little jerky birds, and that would pretty much sum it up quite well. Personally, I refer to them as the chihuahuas of the bird world. They're these tiny little birds, yet they're super aggressive, and they have a lot of bark. Only they do it in a hummingbird way, so it's kind of like... It's a quiet little bark, but nevertheless, it's disproportionate to their size. Last year, my husband decided to set up some hummingbird feeders outside of our house. We got those red feeders, we buy them organic sugar, he changes the solution every few days, he has to prepare it and make sure it's not all the way full because it gets so hot in the summer, we don't want mold to grow in the feeders. But there is always a sugar solution for the birds because my husband tends to these feeders for the birds. And if it starts to get low, the hummingbird appears in the window by our breakfast nook and starts flapping its wings as if to say, Hey guys, this feeder's empty. Time to top it up. And if my husband doesn't see the bird, either myself or my son will pass along the message. It's time to fill the feeders. The birds are coming for you. So the feeder very, very rarely, if ever, gets empty. It is always being replenished, and there are two feeders, so they both don't empty at the same time. If one gets to empty, the other one still has the sugar solution for the birds in it. What I have observed is at first I would see a hummingbird drinking away and think, oh, that's so nice, the bird's so pretty, look at the colors of its head, that bright red head, the feathers on its chest are almost metallic green. What a beautiful bird. And then I started noticing every time I went outside onto the deck where one of the feeders is, I would start to hear hummingbirds. That sound, which is like this flapping noise they make. And I realized this was actually an aggressive stance. They were trying to tell me to get the hell away from the feeder. They're protecting their territory. And after I noticed that, I noticed that It was always the same hummingbird drinking from both of the feeders, even though they're on two different sides of the house. And my husband gave that one bird a nickname. He called him Mean Joe Green, because this bird would not let any other hummingbird go to either of the feeders. He found a perch on top of the neighbor's house where he could watch both feeders. And any time another hummingbird approached the feeder, he would swoop down and chase them away. It was quite fascinating. We started to watch the dynamics of the hummingbirds because sure enough, a few weeks later, a red-headed bird was feeding from the feeder. It wasn't Mean Joe Green. And we thought, what happened to Mean Joe Green? Well, it turns out that Mean Joe Green got pushed out of the way by this red-headed hummingbird. And so it continued. We would watch over the weeks and months and see how These hummingbirds were always challenging each other. And only once did we ever see two birds drinking from the feeder at the same time. So I don't even know why there are all those holes on the bird feeders, because only one bird is drinking. 
99.9% of the time. And that's because that bird is chasing away all the other birds. It's not sharing. It's not playing nice in the sandbox. As the humans supplying the feeder, we have the perspective that we know there's lots more sugar available. We know that we're keeping an eye on the feeders, that when they go empty, we will refill the feeders. Well, my husband will. I'll let him know. <laughs> and no bird ever needs to go hungry. But the hummingbird, the dominant one, spends so much energy protecting his feeders. And I couldn't help but think how this is very much like human beings. Here's the lesson. From our perspective, we're like the hummingbirds. We are going out there believing that the resources are scarce. We must gather and collect and hog them all for ourselves. And I'm speaking in general terms here. But there is this element in human nature where we want to get ahead and we have this feeling we need to survive. So we've got to ensure that we have enough resources for ourselves and stockpile it. And I know it's not a spiritual way to approach things. But it may just be in our biology. Have you ever been to a coffee shop? You're standing in line. The coffee shop's quite full. And you want a table, and there's just one table available, and say you're the 10th person in line. Do you keep eyeing it? Do you look at the line and assess who's going to sit down, who's taking their coffee to go? And I find myself, I have to remind myself, the universe will provide, the universe will provide. Otherwise, I'm going to run over to that table, put my sweater on it, and hog the table, reserve it for myself. Meanwhile, during the time I'm standing in line, people at two other tables could get up and leave and there could be a better table rather than the one that's by the garbage bin near the bathrooms. So I can't help but wonder, watching the hummingbirds, are we not like the hummingbirds expending so much energy not knowing that the universe is always providing? Because as the humans relative to the hummingbirds, I know that there is more sugar. I know that we will feed the feeder. I know that when we run out of sugar, we'll go to the store and buy more sugar and continue filling that feeder. There's no need for that hummingbird to use so much energy to protect the feeder that if the hummingbird would just rest, it wouldn't even need to protect the feeder as much because it wouldn't need as much energy. It wouldn't be expending so much energy on trying to protect the feeder. Then there would be more food for all. Is the universe not also that way, providing for us? But from our human perspective, we cannot see it. Because of the biology, the survival instinct wired into our physical bodies, we find it hard to see or to trust and have faith that the universe is going to provide for us. We're like the hummingbirds thinking there's not going to be enough sugar. But if the universe supplies us through energy, if we are all connected, and the universe provides through this connectiveness, are we not like the hummingbirds when we are acting selfish, when we are afraid, when we doubt? Could we possibly consider redirecting our energy, not depleting our energy for no reason at all? What if we just relaxed and trusted? So let's enter the dragon spirit space and learn what else there is to learn from the hummingbirds. For those of you new to my podcast, I'll just explain what Dragon Spirit is. Dragon Spirit is not a spirit or entity outside of yourself. It's basically your inner guidance. Everybody has the Dragon Spirit inside them. It's your inner guidance. It's that voice within that craves adventure and exploration and also conveniently knows the most expansive answers to your deepest questions. My Dragon Spirit, my inner guidance, told me to call it Dragon Spirit. And you may have your own name for that gut feeling, that instinct inside, your connection to the universe. And what I do is I listen to this guidance. I tune in to your energy. I connect with your energy. Yes, even if you're listening to a podcast recording, I'm connecting with your energy. I'm connecting with your energy because energy transcends space and time. And through this connection, the universe lets me know what to say and share with you to help you quiet your mind so that you can also connect with your inner guidance and receive wisdom and clarity from your soul. So we're going to tune in to that connection. 
I'll hold that space for you in the dragon spirit space. And I'm also going to connect to the energy of the hummingbirds. So to enter the dragon spirit space, you're going to take three dragon breaths. And what you'll do is you'll breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you breathe out, if you feel like letting out a sigh or a sound like a ha, ah, feel free to do so. So let's begin. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Ha. Ah. And again, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Ha. Ah. And once more, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Ha. Ah. Now, imagine a hummingbird. Whatever hummingbird you've seen, it may be blue, it may be green, it may be red, it may be shimmering. Picture it hovering in the air right in front of your face. Do you see how beautiful it is? What an amazing creature it is. So delicate, so beautiful, yet incredibly fast. What it does with its wings, the speed that it flaps its wings, if you had that kind of speed and power, you would be a superhero. You would have superhero powers. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out. Hmm. The universe wants to remind you that while you may not have the wings of the hummingbird, you do have superhero powers. You have your own unique superhero powers. Humans have their own unique superhero powers. And amongst each human, there are unique skills and talents, abilities that are different from each other. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out. Hmm. Now imagine two hummingbirds flying in the vicinity of each other. They are sizing each other up. One is flying higher, one is flying lower. They are flapping, they're doing the woo, 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 aggressive stance towards each other. How often do you do that with other people? Breathe in through your nose and breathe out. Hmm. You may think yourself kind and loving and compassionate, but are you that way to everyone? What if their religious views are different than your own? What if their lifestyle is different than yours? What if the color of the skin is different than yours? What if the culture is different than yours? What if they hold a completely diametrically opposed view on politics, compassion, money, capitalism, intelligence, health. Something that you're really, really passionate about and they completely denigrate it. Are you as open and compassionate? When you encounter a group of these people, forget about the individual. Let's say you encounter a group. People protesting with picket signs and messages on their banners that are completely opposite to something that would get you off the couch and out and protesting. Do you see them with the same compassion and openness? Or are you like the two hummingbirds sizing each other up? Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out. If you could see the way the universe sees you, it does not look and think, hmm, there's only a little bit of sugar water. We must all make sure that we get our share of the sugar water and we must stop anyone else who may threaten our share of the sugar water the way we see mm, not just resources, but the way we want to live our lives. We see mm, the other hummingbirds threatening our way of life, the way we want to live, the values we uphold. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out. Hmm... Tuning into the energy of the hummingbirds, there's not much going on. Mm. They are simple. They are almost mm, mechanical in their approach. They have mm, very much been mm, evolved.
to survive. Because they are tiny little birds, survival is the most important aspect for the species. They serve an important role on this planet with the pollination, with their place in the food chain. They must act on instincts. But humans, and other animals too, who have mm, less threats. So yes, this would include elephants, whales, dolphins to a certain degree. The ones who are higher up on the food chain. And they have more opportunity and capacity to evolve beyond the instincts. So knowing this, see yourself as the universe sees you. There is not a limited supply. The universe sees your beauty, your talent, your potential. And the universe is always filling up the feeder. Even in the times where you felt most struggle, did you not come out on the other side? And if you had more faith in the universe and in yourself, it would not have been as much of a struggle as it had been. So the message from the universe about hummingbirds for you in this moment is fly like a bird, but do not fight like the birds. That's for the birds. And that is the message. And on that note, we will exit the dragon spirit space with three dragon breaths. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out. <sighs> and again, in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> and once more, in through your nose and out through your mouth. <sighs> well, that was an interesting message from the universe. I honestly have no idea what's going to come through until I ask and then the thoughts come through, they pop into my mind and I share them with you. So be like the bird, soar, fly, but we don't have to be simplistic. We don't have to be instinctual. We have this capacity to step outside of that. And while we may not be able to see with the same perspective of the universe, we can intellectually comprehend that concept. And if you feel into your body right now, you can feel the truth in the cells of your body. There's a connection there to the universe in your physicality too. It's what people often refer to as grounding. So when you are grounded, you feel that connection and you have that knowing. You may not fully comprehend it, but you have that knowing. So on that note, we're at the end of this week's podcast episode. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed the Holly C show, Express Your Brilliance with Ease and Flow, you can find every episode of the show on my website at www.hollyc.com. So I look forward to when we reconnect again. Bye for now.